Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be looking at the Fruity Wave Shaper. It is a distortion tool that a lot of people are afraid of using because they don't know how how it works. But they know it's it's cool. But I see a lot of people grab other units, other distortion units, where the Fruity Wave Shaper is actually you know, super versatile. So we're going to be breaking down how it works, and then we're going to look at some examples and some shapes that are very very useful. So first off. A fruity a wave shaper, the fruity wave shaper in this case is very versatile. What it does is it takes an input. So this this x axis is your input. This is what's coming the the volume level that's coming in, and then it remaps it to an output. So this is this is the output. So right now with a line, we'll look at this. If it comes in at one, the output is also a one. If it comes in at two, the output is also a two. So this is going to keep whatever comes in the exact same. It's going to send the exact same thing out. This is what it sounds like, right? I have a sine wave, soft sine waves, loud sine waves. You know, they're all going to come out exactly as they should. That that other issue is because I <laughs> it was too loud in general. So with this with this sort of a line, what happens if we do this? If we put and we, we sort of put it off like that. Well, now this is saying, hey, if it's in this region, if it's soft, keep it the same. It's still linear. A one is still a one. A two is still a two. But anything past the two is going to remain a two. So we're going to hard clip. So those regions of the sine wave that are past this value will hard clip. This is what it looks like and sounds like. So we see these are fine, but these, not so fine. But if we were to play softer, no clipping occurs. So now uh, you might be going, wow, okay, so that's how that's a that's a clipper. This is how you make a clipper. And you you could of course do something kind of like this. What if we did this? This is a soft clipper. Instead of it doing it right away, it's gonna kind of round out. So it'll still let things get louder, but it's it's not gonna hard clip, it's not gonna just flatten the line and say this is as loud as you can go. It'll let it go over, but it's just gonna do it gradually. This is the same thing as the soft clipper. See a little bit rounded and you can hear some upper harmonics get entered in now, but not much. And so that's what a soft clipper is. So already very, very handy. Uh, you can you can pretty much replace uh, all the clipping ones if, you, if you're looking for just uh, a pure. Now, some of them have like analog modeling on them, so it doesn't do that, but it does functionally what a hard clipper and a soft clipper will do. And so that's an option. Of course, the wave shaper is much more powerful than that. So let's go into a more interesting case. So if you, I'm going to drag up, and if you right click, it'll uh, it'll reset the, the line for you. Let's do this. Let's uh, make a curve like this. So this is linear afterwards, but this region is going to be zero. So if your sound is too soft, it'll be, it'll be zero. If I play a soft note. There's the note. You can see it show up, but no, no sound because it's 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 too soft. But what happens when I play in the higher region? Just just guess in your head. What do you think will happen? Will it be exactly the same? Will the waveform be different in some way? And I'll explain the result after after we see it. So here we go. So get a guess going. I think it really helps to understand what's going on. Okay. So hopefully you saw that this is, does not perfectly linear after. That's because the regions that are affected are these zero crossing regions. So spots in the wave where the volume level there is between here and here. And we said make those zero. We've effectively made zero crossing distortion. This, this has some other interesting properties. So right now we're just putting in sine waves you know nothing exciting but you can see this this looks at the waveform on a on like a per sample level like it individually looks at all the different samples so it's, it's not like a, a general shape it's like a compressor with an instantaneous attack and release but the thing is it also looks at the wave a, across the whole thing all at the same time so if we were to you know put some clipping on we're going to clip the upper end and we're going to do some zero crossing distortion we're, we're mixing distortion types now and we get that 
we're getting we're approaching a, a square wave now oh yeah now i'm playing too soft so let's play a little bit louder see if we can't get in that middle region there we go so that's a little bit of what's what's going on and hopefully you're beginning to wrap your head around how this kind of works now there's a couple shapes i really like and there's a case we need to consider so the case we need to consider is of course right now we're just feeding it in a, a sine wave but a lot of sounds have an attack and decay profile they don't stay the same loudness through the whole sound like for example a piano key you hit it it starts loud and then it would go backwards and the level the top level would slowly drop through this whole curve uh, and when you do a lot of distortion when it goes backwards through this curve you can get some sounds that are really funky and generally not pleasant because you know you're hearing it go through this giant remapping curve thing uh, so i actually will typically like to draw in a little thing down here for those cases to catch some of that high frequency noise that gets introduced this can actually like stop quite a bit of it and uh, let's go through some some basic shapes so now we've seen this shape and this shape what they kind of mean uh, let's look at another one that i like to do that's very common there, there's two more that come to mind that I, I use quite often. There's the single line curve as just a one big line. You could drag it down. This will effectively make it so that soft is is going to be like a gate. More, it's more like a gate even than before because this is just going to crush everything. And the loud stuff will be the same loudness anyways. It's only ever truly as loud as it was at the very end. So this is kind of like a volume control. But what if you go the other way? Well, this is going to turn stuff up fast. So what was originally, if this came in, this is only like this loud, right? It's a little itty bitty thing. Now it's getting turned all the way up to like here in this range. And the harder you push this, you're going to add another point to really sell it. You hear all that noise that comes up? That is what this curve does. And it can provide some really cool abilities to pump things back up and then you can filter and compress them again and then pump it back up and filter and compress it again so this is a curve i like to use a lot um, it's very handy and i might change how aggressive i am maybe i keep this region a little more under wraps for this zero crossing stuff if i notice there's a lot of like if you have reverb on your sound a lot of it's going to live down in this range maybe extend it a bit it's going to live down here and then i'll get way more aggressive where the general tone of the sound lives so in a way this this it doesn't have frequency spectrum you have to think completely in level it has nothing to do with the the spectrum but it has everything to do with the level and the levels usually are kind of separated in the processing which is why you might pick one over the other so if we were to toss a verb on this Let's go ahead and route this out through the... Oh, we'll just add the effect slot on. Bring it on, toss a verb on it. And we'll bring the, the chorus down to one. That's what it sounds like right now. We might bring this up. And now let's uh, see what it would sound like if I were to do something like this. You, you hear that... that backwards sound I was talking about earlier let me like really exaggerate it yeah I call it like plastic that's just it reminds me of a crinkling bag this is an issue all the time in wave shaping and if you just simply know how it works you can do now oh, imagine how that was that'd be a crazy sound right there we'll get to combined uh, compound shapes here after this but if you just do this it keeps that stuff mostly linear. In fact, you could even reduce some of it earlier, which is what I was talking about with sort of the gating thing. And it can really help. It can go a long way towards reducing that effect. There you go. And you see, we've also affected the decay profile some because of how this is. But, but it's a way to distort things with verb and space and room on them without completely destroying them. And this is a very handy when you're working with like a guitar recording that might have some stuff like that already on it or a piano recording or any other, especially like, you know, just a live record, a voice, anything that was recorded in a room and isn't being synthesized. Okay, let's talk about compound shapes really quick. So th there's more branches we could go into, but these are, these are the most common use cases for me. The last common use case is a compound shape 
where I might do something like this. So this is going to really affect the soft stuff. Then I'll turn down like all these things that are in the middle and then turn it way back up here at the end. Let's just do this. So this sort of a shape, let's just to make it clear, let's just make it like a line and we'll, we'll bring these up. So this is going to be quite aggressive, right? But there's a second characteristic to these curves that gets introduced that I just want you to begin to think about. Uh, and that's when when the sound comes in, it's going to the initial attack is going to go through all of this stuff. When it decays, which you just saw, is it, it can produce that plastic reversal sound. It's also going to go through this again. And this could lead to interesting effects. Um, I've got actually another example that just came to my mind where I use this sort of a shape on purpose. It would sound totally terrible under most conditions. But in that case, it, it becomes an extremely musical effect. So let's just hear this. Let's get, let me play it pretty loud so we can go all the way through. Yeah. So you get some, some kind of nice effects. Again, to mitigate that, we might have some sort of a, uh, of now you generally don't want sharp edge, sharp, sharp, instantaneous changes in level are uh, asking for a square wave, like sort of a sound. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Uh, so you generally want to smooth things just a smidge so it's not instantaneous this acts almost this acts more like a filter at this point than a than a curve that work that provides distortion i think of it more as a filter it's just a little less sharp but anyways yeah that's uh that's the process so when you see the shapes i'm making those are some of the the basic things i'm thinking about now let's let's go over to two examples because i've gone a little bit longer than i thought i was going to um, the first one is it's a track called down low. I wasn't going to show you this one, but it is a fantastic example. It is a fantastic example of using that effect in a musical way where it, it still sounds good and it's cause it's momentary. Okay. So here's the track. It's a bass house track. It sounds dope. It's one of my favorites and I've got this shape here. I think right here, it honestly comes through the best. Uh, let's really quick find the bass sound. Um, I can't remember exactly. Was it on the main bass? I believe it is. So here's the wave shaper. This is what it looks like. So we've got that compound shape thing going on. And you can see this is going to be super aggressive. Usually it wouldn't sound that good statically. But notice it's off. And when I scroll through here, it will mix. It'll mix on. Let me detach this so it doesn't go underneath anymore. So as I go through here, it turns on and off, and it's just an effect. I treat it almost like a, vi a really aggressive vibrato, almost, in a way. Uh, let's just hear it. It's very, very soft because I don't have the limiter on to save on CPU. But yeah, that kind of a thing. That is being accomplished by, first, how you write your, your MIDI, right? You want your MIDI to work well with this. And that's the wave shaper just being turned on and off. You can even see it coming in and out. So that's a way of using shapes like this that are like very, very hyper aggressive. And it still sounds like great. Um, oh, there's a couple of places here where it actually works out. So here's the main drop sound. So that want, 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 want. That is the wave shaper. That's this guy being automated on and up. It, it works musically with the pattern. So it's like an emphasis. It's kind of like the emphasis, the accent. Um, if we come over here to the drop, I want to go to the second drop because it's got some neat stuff going on in it. Drop low. So that is just a quick example. And then for the last one, I want to show you sort of a kind of an over the top one that's got, you know, a billion things going on and it just wound up sounding super flipping cool. So this sound design is probably going to be like, you know, crazy looking to you, but I just want to show you some of the possibilities here and those basic shapes and how they can be applied in a much more complicated setup. Okay. So this, yeah, this project might appear a bit scary just because there's a lot of automation, but I just want to show you something. So I talked about pumping up and down. So here's the chain it goes through. It's a pretty aggressive chain. You can see there's a lot of e-filtering going on um, very much. 
This is the pump back up stage and then the filtering. But at the, at the very intro of this patch, at its, at its beginning, is this patch here. And uh, we'll detach this again just so we can have this on top. There is a split band going on. So I'm not going to explain this whole chain because it's kind of a video all unto itself. But in essence, there is a waveform being generated. It's got spectral content. I'm taking that content and splitting it up into different bands. And if we were to listen to this. You can see this is like there's so many things happening here. We can see it's being split and the band doesn't sit still. The mid band is constantly changing in a way that I thought would produce neat effects. There's the high mid low. The high band has just a gentle rise. Nothing crazy. Uh, the, the mids is really what I'm after. So here's the mids. We see that there's that gating effect here on it to avoid some of that sort of plasticky sound that's going down this sort of a shape. And then we're going to just sort of round out. This is a, basically a soft clipper with taking care of sort of what would happen as things go down. This feeds into a delay unit that provides a, a flangery Haas effect kind of a thing for me. And then the bottom one, this is the low end, again, dealing with that backwards sort of sound and just some gentle expansion, essentially, is what's going on here. And there'll be some zero crossing distortion uh, because of this, uh, but it obviously you can hear the final output. It sounds great. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, and then we hit another one, which is doing a little bit of cleanup in each of the regions and just sort of brightening the texture in general uh, back up. This is going to pump the sound back up. You can see the different bands have just sort of been yanked up a touch and nothing else has really been altered here. And that, that's just a more uh, complex setup. When I, when I grab it, I see it as a really fundamental tool. There's lots of distortions out there that offer you different you know ways of, of doing things. Uh, even wave shapers themselves. Wave shaper just means it messes with the shape of the wave. This is just kind of like one of the most versatile wave shapers around because of the level of control it gives you. Uh, but that that's basically it. So hopefully you feel a little bit more comfortable about what it is, what it does, how it works, and uh, some places where you might grab it. Uh, sound design, you can use it in mixing. Um, it can sound great on some 808s, for example. As an, I, I like to use it early on in the stage so that I can clean up what it makes. It's great at generating harmonics that you can then kind of sculpt into what you want. And that's it. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day. Okay.